fourth C, culture. Culture in a team or an organization and how, as leaders, you look to preserve the culture and ethos of a brand without losing the individuality of every member in the team. Joining us for this conversation is Shauna Kosh, the Chief Marketing Officer at Turtle Mint. Welcome, Shauna. Lovely having you here with us. Thank you so much, Mandira. Mm -hmm. Right, first up, Ravi, I'm going to ask you, how does culture work in a, in a you know, team culture work in a sport context? I think extremely important because uh, team culture at the end of the day is what is going to dictate terms as far as how the team plays. So making everyone feel equal is extremely important. Making uh, everyone communicate with each other where, to an extent where no one is made a scapegoat. You know, in, in games that are played, you're going to have one outstanding performance, you might have a very poor performance on that given day, which might be detrimental to the team and the team loses. In good team culture, that individual is not made to feel bad at all. Mm. It's part and parcel of the game. The guy who's done well today might have a similar day, while as this guy is on the upswing. So you've got to realize in team culture, you win together, you lose together. Mm. Shonak, why is culture important in the whole corporate? You know, while pe people will need their individual you know, moments under the sun, chances to shine, but it's also important that you know that who are the people who have backed you to do that. There are certain people who are responsible you know, for a project, for example. But there are so many others who are actually those people who are working very, very hard to deliver it. So, from a culture point of view, it's important to feel empowered you know, in, in one, one sort of way because you know that this is me, this is me who has to deliver, I have to stand up and deliver and uh, whatever comes, come hail, sunshine, corona, whatever it may be, people are still working and doing that. And that's the kind of ethos we try and put it in the corporate sector. It's important to give some glimpses of what is that big cause we are all working towards. What about this family feeling, clan culture? Is it is it something that you know boosts engagement within the team, or is it like not sustainable as the company or the team grows and scale and becomes bigger? I think in in the in cricketing parlance, it works. You know, feeling like a family mm. because you at any given time you'll have 15 in the team, so. You, you don't really take it to that extent. But in COVID times, mm. you had 30, 35 people traveling. Yes. So, you know, it was a much bigger unit and you had to make even the guys who were not knew they were never going to play. Mm. They were just part as the extras or as net bowlers. You've got to make them feel that they're part of that unit. And sure. at any given time, their opportunity might come. If there are injuries or if someone has a mental breakdown, you know, their opportunities, uh, you know, could come. So basically making everyone feel inclusive. Uh, inclusivity in the corporate setup with so much diversity, how and gender gaps, how do you make sure that you, you have equality of opportunity for everyone? We have fairly good talent pools, you know, across, uh, you know, be it gender, be it, you know, geography, be it, you know, any kind of language versus, uh, you know, primarily English speaking. Whichever way you kind of split it, mm. we have a fairly large pool to kind of choose from. However, there are certain uh, you know, functions which are very, very, at least if I may say, very gender specific, you know, at mm. least from very male heavy. So I'm not going to name some of them, but it, it's how it has been. So it's very difficult uh, to kind of... you have women of, breaking the glass ceiling everywhere. Absolutely. And that is... So even very male specific jobs yes. are now being handled by yes absolutely i mean what better than the indian armed forces for example yeah, of course, right? i mean yeah, of course. you see the air, air force, force pilots air force, you see yeah. so many i mean we are getting into fighting forces right and so there is nothing which is beyond the reach and you know as corporates we acknowledge that so yeah i think it's it's the need of the hour we indeed we have indeed to inclusivity in the team mm. now look at our indian cricket team for example we have people from every yeah. part of india speaking different languages um, coming from different socio economic backgrounds as well of course after a certain point they make a lot of money and then you know things level out in some sense but how do you how do you uh, get that feeling of in the culture of inclusivity 
in the team? It's very important as a coach uh, to make everyone feel they're on the same page. Mm. So communication becomes very, very yes. critical, you know, and you reach a point where you know everything is good when there's no finger pointing. As a coach, I hate finger pointing, mm. you know, because tomorrow one guy is going to have a bad day. The other guy is going to have a good one. Three guys might have a bad day. The last thing I want is we lost this game because that guy did this, that guy did this. It is we did this. You know, that's why we lost. Get used to that. You know, that is important, very, very important. Where you, and then once that, that uh, fear factor goes in an individual, then he's not scared of failure. You know, he says, it's okay. It's a team game. You know, I did badly, but the team still won. Yeah. Mm. You know, he might walk up to that guy, thanks, yeah, you bailed me out today. Mm. I mean, that is the, the best thing I'd like to see. When you know, someone walks from one end to the other and shakes the guy, then thanks, yeah, bajaa diya. Mm. You know, the naak katne wala tha mera. Mm. Which is, that is camaraderie. That is a family. That is in being inclusive. Mm. That's being part of the inner circle, you know, mm. which is brilliant. Mm. This culture of the common good over the individual, the individual risk taker, the aggressive, the you know someone who has a high tolerance for risk. The, the, how do you instill that message of the collective good over the individual within your teams? Yes, uh, I think uh, you know talking about the larger cause, mm. you know, and the transparency mm. within the team is very important. You know, who is working on what? A lot of times, you know, people have this that someone else may be walking away with the credit, you withhold information or I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's a, I'm not generalizing it, but it can happen within a team. Any kind of friction which, and these are things, these are friction points, right? How as leaders, how do we kind of make it simpler by A, allocating this responsibility, right? Mm. B, giving the proper transparency within the team, mm. right? Who, how are they performing? And see, you know, we, so for example, we, we do have a lot of uh, collaborative tools, so as to say, where a project can literally be broken down and assigned to who is working on what, and they can sub-assign it to people. Uh, so literally breaking it down to the T. So if, I'm, if I know that, you know, A and B has been delivered, this is the person who has done it. Mm -hmm. So it brings a lot of transparency, it brings a lot of ownership, because you know that in a common forum, yes. it is being seen, acknowledged. How do you actually instill that culture of ownership, of belonging? Accountability is uh, its so important that, mm. again, it comes to looking at the bigger picture. How can I contribute to the team? You know, it's when you are, when you feel accountable, that's when the best comes out of you. You know, you don't, then you, every time you go out to bat or you get out onto the field, there are the butterflies in the tunnel. When you don't get those butterflies, then it's dangerous. Mm. Then something's amiss. You know, you're not paying that attention to details, so very important. And finally, from the both of you, you know, these last two years have been very, very different. Nobody had a, yeah. you know, blueprint or nobody had an idea of how to navigate. But especially for teams <coughs> where you're working, be it a, a sport team, cricket team, or be it teams who are working remotely, working individually. What principles or processes did you put into place so that they could still feel that belonging, feel they were a part of something, feel they were, you know, connected to something towards a greater good. I think showing empathy more than anything else and also making and them being told that these times what you are seeing, nobody has seen nobody has. in the last 70 years. Yeah, so yeah. immediately putting them in a position that uh, nothing much is expected out of them. These are tough times, mm. it's adversity, but if you write these times properly, there will be an opportunity. Mm. So take your time when that opportunity comes, but it grab it. You know, it's going to come. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, we have a corporate term for it. It's called VUCA. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it used. It's volatile, uncertain, you know, complex and uh, very, very, you know, uncertain, ambiguous in nature. Mm. Right? Okay. So it's that, that's the thing. I mean, so we know that we have to be prepared during these times. Empathy, right? Like you rightly mentioned, it was so important to let people know that hey guys, it's okay, you know, you're safe, things are good. We as a company, this is what we are doing. 
uh, and not just within us, even within the peer group, this is something which we saw being adopted a lot. Uh, the initial days were very uncertain, I might add. Of course. Because uh, you, you need to tell people, so you know, just getting into a two-hour cultural Zoom call, you know, which allowed people to share their talents. You know, just to say that, hey guys, it's okay, yes. things are normal, yes. you are home. We still belong yeah. Yeah. and Someone we belong is playing together. Absolutely. Something is keeping us apart, yes. it's a virus, but we still belong to That's a... That's right. And things are okay, hope is a great thing, Yes. it will unite us. I think that's and Vukka, now, Vukka, 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 vulnerability, yeah. uncertainty, uh, complexity and ambiguity. Oh. Was it difficult to get people to, you know, belong again? Was it difficult to navigate back to the way things were? Absolutely. It was, I mean, it was difficult in the first place. Mm. You know, when you're confined to your rooms, you can't meet each other, you can't go out, you're uh, in lockdown, mm. even while playing sport at the highest level. Yeah. And then you get the freedom freedom to go out, meet again, obviously it's going to make a massive difference. My only worry at that time was someone doesn't get a mental breakdown, including myself. Of course, you of know, course. That, uh, we you all know, went you, through so much. It, 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 you went through so much. So, you know, when, when people obviously were suddenly given um, the freedom to get out, it was like a breath of fresh air. You know, you could see the adrenaline pumping, you, could, you knew and you could see the game going up a couple of notches. I mean, in whatever you do, yeah. yeah, the energy levels were different. I think it's difficult to get everybody back to the same normal, so mm -hmm. as to say. Because everybody's gone through different things yeah, in this right. last yeah. two years. That's right. So things have changed. People have also realized that you know nothing is absolutely mandatory. You know, uh, people. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we are still you know actually in the midst of creating a new normal, so as to say, mm. which involves people coming back to office. It's definitely a breath of fresh air. You know, meeting each other, kind of jamming together, trying to solve you know, basic problems together, and not uh, needless to add, you know, one hour Zoom calls and two hour calls like that mm -hmm. have gone down to 15, 20 minutes. You know, you can just walk up to someone, solve things, and be on the go. Also, things we took for granted so much as meeting people now that we're back together, um, we actually value and cherish it Absolutely. and look forward to it because it was taken away from us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, on that note, brings us to the end of this segment. Thank you very much, Shonik, for Thank you sharing so much your insights. For Thanks. 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 Thanks a lot.